Hey everyone, welcome to Think Woodworks. Today it's all about dust collection. I have a super famous woodworker showing up in my shop this weekend, and I'm really excited about having him here. Now I've been busting butt all week getting ready for him. Ah! <laughs> But it's crunch time, so I need to finish the installation of the dust collection system and beef up the dust collection stuff on my table saw. And we're going to talk about that today and hopefully give you a few ideas that you can use in your own shop in the future for your dust collection system. First of all, let's talk about the CV1800 that I got from Clearview. With a 5 horsepower motor, this CV1800 from Clearview Cyclones moves 1900 cubic feet of air per minute, which means it cycles the air in my shop about every two to two and a half minutes. I will mention the manufacturer recommends that you have a five foot section of straight pipe coming off of the separator, which I wasn't able to do in my shop because of limited space. But with the CV1800, there is some assembly required, but I'll post videos in the description box below of some really great videos on the assembly process. Today we're going to focus on installing the ductwork and modifying a table saw to work with the piping. Started by cutting some braces and then screwed those to the ceiling into studs. And then using my scientific wild ass guess or swag method, I kind of figured out the layout for the piping. Now once I had a good idea about what I wanted to do for the piping, I made all the cuts on my chop box. I had to flip it over to make it all the way through the six inches. And now I'm using these really heavy duty uh, T's and Y's that have a grommet inside of them. Uh, so I'm taking that grommet out because once you get those on, they're almost impossible to get apart. And then I'm just uh, running two screws on each side to hold everything together. And then I'll come back later and run some silicone around the outside of the fitting. And once I got to this point, I pretty much laid everything down on the floor and did the rest of the assembly on the floor for the pipes that would go up on the ceiling. And I want to assemble as much as I can on the floor before I lift it up. Now for the blast gates, I just cut two short pieces of 6 inch PVC, slid them in, and then I did silicone them and tap them in with some short screws. And that just holds the blast gates in and really nice and tight. Now with my blast gates done, I pretty much just went through and finished the rest of the assembly that, for this big long section that was going to go up. It was a little awkward setting this large section up in the air by myself. It would have been nice to have a second set of hands, but still easier than building it up in the air. Now I came back where I added those braces earlier, added some metal strapping to hold everything in place, and then where the two pieces came together, I just came back and screwed it and then siliconed it. With all the PVC done, the next thing I needed to do was add the flex hose. Now, I didn't want to use pipe clamps. I wanted a nice smooth transition. So what I ended up doing is using a union and then just shoving the hose into that and siliconing it in place. And it worked out really well. And of course, I'm going to turn it on and try it out. Managed to get my arm stuck in there. It's amazing how much force this really has. With that done, it was time to tackle the table saw. Now because I intend on replacing this table saw in the next few months, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. So to cover up the large openings in the bottom of the saw, I just used a large piece of cardboard, fit it in place, and then attached it with some high quality tape. Now I want to add a 6 inch port to the back of the saw, and to do that I need something solid to mount it to, so I cut a piece of half inch plywood, just a piece of scrap, any air gaps left I'll actually cover with tape. I attached it with some metal tapping screws, traced a 6 inch opening, and then cut it out with my jigsaw. Now with the opening cut out, I just taped up any air gaps that were left and added a little piece of 6 inch union to it so I could slide some PVC in there and then attach my flex hose. And that worked really well. Now in the front of the saw there's that large slot for the angle changing on the blade and I wanted to cover that as well so I used a product called Saw Stash which is actually made for this to cover up that gap. And I just used again some self tapping metal screws to attach it to my saw and that still leaves everything freely to move but covers up a lot of that air gap really restricting the airflow through it. With everything done it was time to test it out and I will tell you that I've owned a lot of machines over the years and this CV1800 from Clearview Cyclones is easily one of the best I've ever owned and it costs a lot less than some of the ones I've paid for. 
Now while most of the shop is attached to dust collection now, I still have a few tools that make some sawdust, mostly my hand tools, and I wanted to be able to clean that up really easily, so I added a sweet port. But I don't want to get screws or washers or nuts in there, so I added a magnetic strip right in front of the sweet port so it picks up all that loose metal before it goes into the dust collection. So I did one thing wrong when I installed my ductwork, and let's see if anybody catches it. Comment down below if you know what it is. Also, if you're going to buy something from Clearview, don't forget to type in CVC Fan at the checkout for 5% off. If you'd like to watch a great video on what's involved in installing the CV1800, click on the alligator. And don't forget to check me out on my social media. I'm always posting videos and pictures of projects as they're happening. As always, please subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon.